All right, so a lot of you guys know when I first started, I used subcontractors, okay? And really, it was just the first couple months kind of just going to sell a job, and I'd have one or two, maybe three subcontractors that I would refer the job to. And it was great, you know? It was cool because you know, I was like, oh, man, I'm making all this money. I'm not painting. That's great. But uh, some things happened along the way, and I'll, I'll list them for you. It was a lack of loyalty. They were trying to sell their own work on the job, okay? And this is when I was first starting, so I didn't have a ton of rules and processes and standards in place to make sure this doesn't happen my network was real small so guess what if they found their own work what would happen I'd have to call my homeowner and say oh well we have to reschedule the date I promised you and obviously I couldn't say well my home my my subcontractors busy that day that I had assigned for your job and you know there's no predictability so I would really I wouldn't really be able to give my homeowners a date we could start I have to say okay we'll get back to you when we can start and it was just embarrassing it was unprofessional okay another thing guys is when and people ask me, okay, well, do you have employees or subcontractors? Anytime I told them that the people working for me were independent contractors, I get that look like, uh, you know, so really what I did is I tailored my needs to what the homeowner wanted, okay? And essentially, I felt that the homeowner wanted uniformity. Uh, they wanted professionalism, which they're expecting employees of the person that's representing the brand to be there. Now, you know, a lot of companies do it with subcontractors, guys. We are not general contractors. We are painting contractors. So again, you got to remember, there's this fine line between between, you know, can we get away with subcontractors for a long time? I guess yes, if you have a network of maybe 30 of them and you know they you can you send out a blast email with job details and they get to choose whether or not they want to do the job. But if you're kind of a smaller, you know, painting company, you're maybe doing under a million a year, it's really going to be hard to justify uh, using subcontractors over and over and over again without kind of crossing that boundary between misclassifying your workers. So with that being said, I'm going to give you three things, three reasons right now why I think employees are, are the route to go and number one you know that's cut that's loyalty you know loyal to the brand when you have employees you know they're gonna be working for you five days a week you can set the rules set the standards tell them how to dress tell them what to wear you know tell them you know how to do the job when you deal with subcontractors they're essentially their own business so you know they're out to make a profit they could do things their own way which we don't want in our business okay number two is predictability guys being able to schedule being able to know okay I have this team they're gonna be here at this time so on and so forth and number three guys it's in the best interest of the painter to be an employee and the reason why I say this is because I've been in this business long enough to know that a lot of painters I work with you know aren't financially savvy okay so what will happen at the end of the year if I'm just writing 1099 checks for an entire year they're gonna get a nice $30,000 statement from my accountant that pretty much is gonna tell them hey you know you have to pay 25% or whatever the tax rate is on that amount of money so what's gonna happen at that point in time well they're gonna say well I don't have you know six to ten thousand dollars saved up to pay this tax bill um, well we need to understand why why? And then it's going to get in the conversation of, well, who sent you this tax bill? And then you could be opening up a can of worms for your business that I just really don't think you need to do. So if you have guys that are working for you, I think it's time that you need to have that conversation and say, hey, you know, just like I did, you know, I said, guys, this is the direction my business is heading. I'm, I'm adapting the employee model. We're going to start tightening up our processes. Are you in or are you out? And if they're out, guys, find employees. It's time to make that transition. And if they're in, Great, now you have someone to work with that you've already worked with and you can start doing things what I like to think of is the right way. So guys, you know, there's no real yes or no answer here. I just wanted to break up why I do things the way I do. I think it's more professional and I think it's a longer lasting model that's gonna deliver you much better predictable results with loyal employees. And you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure your homeowners are gonna appreciate working with a company that invests in employees instead of just, you know, writing that 1099 check.